pick this place. What a stupid place to pick. Also, why am I wearing a tie? I look like an art teacher. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Scholars, let me welcome you back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and master educator who attempts to provide the best in art historical content, like, share, do all those things. Hey, it's free. It's, uh, you know. And your problem is you. Folks, there are several art exhibitions that would change the direction of art history. One of those series was a series of exhibitions known as the Impressionist Exhibitions. There were eight. Today we're going to look at the first of eight, hopefully create a series out of that, and uh, so let's just jump right on in and get down into the, uh, get down into the facts of it. From 1874 to 1886, the various artists and would-be impressionists came together for eight separate exhibitions over those years. Now some people think that this was a movement to somewhat replace the salon system that was happening in Paris at this time, but that is a disingenuous statement. Many of the big-name artists would actually leave the show to eventually go back and exhibit in the more profitable salon. They would have amateurs, realists, and, of course, those that would eventually become known as the Impressionists. Even among true Impressionist painters, deep divisions would emerge over time. Some of the information out there is a little bit challenging to decipher because a lot of the documentation, the catalogs, and accounts contain omissions and errors. Are you interested in the real story or just the patriotic crap they want you to believe? The first of these exhibitions was hosted in Nader's Photography Studio from April the 15th to May the 15th of 1874. This Paris exhibition was organized by Claude Monet, Camille Pizarro, Edgar Degas, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sicily, and Bertha Morissat. The show would include 165 works by 30 different artists. Monet's Impression Sunrise was among them and responsible for the group getting their name. Although 3,500 people came and paid to see this exhibition, most would come to laugh and joke at the expense of the work that was there. The reporters and the critics absolutely hated it. Although not an Impressionist, Edgar Degas was involved because he needed some money after his family business had just failed. Wanting to show to a wider audience, he felt like being a part of this show would provide money and potential earnings down the line. Artists would purchase shares in the exhibition as this was an event incorporated with shareholders. The charter was finished on December the 27th, 1873 by Monet and Pizarro, and they would ask 30 francs a year to purchase the shares for that artist to be included in the show. Now, Edgar Degas was responsible for getting the most signatures of people signed up to be in the show, but the vast majority of the people that he signed up were not Impressionist-style painters. They were realist painters that were allowed to be included so they could potentially earn more money. Now, this incorporated company was not called the Impressionist quite yet. The company was actually called the Joint Stock Company of Artists, Painters, Sculptors, Engravers, and Lithographers. Now, once they kind of had their nucleus of artists and some sort of understanding of who was going to be in this show, the first group decision was whether or not they were going to allow Paul Cezanne to be included past year, Cezanne was very highly criticized, and he wanted to submit a painting called A Modern Olympia. His buddy Pizarro was the only one that really was in favor of allowing Cezanne in, but 
because Degas was getting so many of those realist painters to become included and these so-called outsiders were coming into the group, this collective would not reject their fellow professional so Paul Cezanne was allowed in, but with very little fanfare. Hey! What do you want to do? What? Welcome to Boston! We love New York is here! Pierre Auguste Renoir was to oversee the hanging of the show by classifying the work and having some semblance of categories when organizing how the show would be hung. His brother Edmund created the catalog. Now there were 30 artists that were included in that show. They would include Zachary Astruc, Anton Ferdinand Tendu, Edouard Ballard, Eugene Bolden, Felix Brokmund, Edouard Brandon, Pierre Isidore Hiro, Adolphe Felix Callas, Paul Cezanne, Gustave Collin, Louis de Brasse, Edgar Degas, Jean Baptiste Armand Juilliman, Louis Latroque, Ludovic Napoleon Lepic, Stanislas Lepin, Jean Baptiste Lenard Levert, Alfred Mayer, Auguste de Olens, Claude Monet, Bertha Morissat, Merlot Durovich, Joseph Dinidis, Auguste Louis Marie Otten, Leon Auguste Otten, Camille Pizarro, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Stanislas Henri Ruart, Leopold Robert, Alfred Sicily. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I, I can't understand what you're saying. These 30 artists would have displayed 135 works, so several of the artists had more than one piece. The artist with the most works was not even an impressionist. Edgar Degas had submitted 10 works. Claude Monet would oftentimes be seen as a leader of the group, and he had 9 works in this first exhibition, including the namesake of the group, Impression Sunrise. Bertha Morissot also had 9 works in the show. Other artists with good collections in this exhibition included Renoir with 7 works, Pizarro with 5 works, Alfred Sisley with five works, and Paul Cezanne with three works. Now the intention of this whole thing was to make money. Alfred Sisley would walk away with the most sales equaling about a thousand francs. Renoir and Monet both made just under 200 at the show, while Pizarro made about 130. Needless to say, this was a commercial bust. I have to admit I wasn't expecting an invitation back. In December, Renoir led a meeting with all of the stakeholders of this company and it owed 3,713 francs and only had 278 in hand. So each exhibitor was required to pay an additional 184 francs and change and they would unanimously decide to liquidate the whole company and be done with it. But, as we know, that wouldn't be the end of it. You see, the next year, in 1875, they would have an art auction at the Hotel Travolt, and they were ready to make some money, although they didn't. Collectors in Britain and America loved this style of work, but people in Europe hated it. And so people that would be dropping in to see the show to spend some money on artwork did not come to spend money on their artwork. Having learned from their lumps a few lessons, some of these artists would get back together again in 1876 for their second exhibition. But artists would come and go from these shows. For example, Pizarro is the only artist that was included in all eight of the shows, and as an anarchist, he would refuse to assume any form of leadership of the group whatsoever. But we'll talk about that in a segment in the future, and until then, hopefully this was a great insight into the uphill battle that was the creation of the Impressionist art exhibitions in Paris. Folks, I hope you enjoy hearing that as much as I enjoy delivering it, and there will be a series of eight on the eight different exhibitions of the Impressionist artists We'll get into those as we move forward, but in the meantime, you have yourselves great days, and we'll see you next time. That was weird. Oh, sister, it's going to get way weirder.